Finally, iOS 17 Beta 2 has been released. 16 days after the release of the first beta, we finally have a new update for iOS 17. And it should come to your device at around one and a half gigs. That of course is way smaller than the first beta and it has quite a lot of new features and changes. So in this video, we're taking a look at more than 50 new features and changes that you will be able to find on iOS 17 Beta 2. Now, before we get into all that, I just wanna ask you guys for a really quick favor most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel so if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more of them please make sure you hit that subscribe button it really helps out a lot so let's get started with the first change and as you can see right here the update page has changed on ios 17 and it looks much different from the old one so you can see right here of course the description of the update and then you will have two buttons right there to update now or tap on update tonight which of course will schedule that update for an update during the night while your phone is plugged in and connected to the internet another change you will see here is that if you have scheduled the update then you will get this pop-up right here which shows you that you have scheduled that update you can cancel the update from here or you can choose to update right away simply by tapping the update now button. And now let's move on into some more settings that have been changed on iOS 17 beta 2. First of all, go to notifications. And when you go to messages here, you will see a button right here for critical alerts. So you will have time sensitive notifications and then also critical alerts, which you can enable from here. Going under the general settings and on the iPhone storage, you will have the storage right there at the top and you will see See those like dots right there now with iOS 17 beta 2 they will show way more information of course based on the stuff that you have stored on your iPhone it will even show more for some people you can see right here we have applications photos books and all that but if you have like mail and things like that they will all show up right here there has been change on the standby mode as well. So if you go to standby settings, you will have here show notifications. Now what you can do here is disable notifications for the standby mode. Even though you might disable this, you can see that it says right here that critical, critical notifications will still be shown on the standby mode. So you can disable all the usual notifications, but the critical ones still will be shown on your standby mode. Going under the accessibility settings and under touch right here, you will see a new setting when you go to haptic touch. So it used to be default and slow. Now you can also choose the touch duration to fast and it works much, much faster than the other ones. And the crossfade option, basically the settings of the music app have been fixed with iOS 17 beta 2. Now on the first beta, if you would just go under the music settings right here and enable crossfading, it would just crash these settings and it wouldn't work anymore. You wouldn't be able to actually have access to the music settings. Now that has been fixed and here we have also the crossfade which you can enable from here. And now with the second beta, you also have this slider which basically lets you choose how long you want the crossfade to last. So you can go from one second up to 12 seconds. Another feature that is really, really nice with crossfading is that now crossfade will work also with repeating songs. So if you have a song on repeat, it will still work. Previously, it would just jump right to the beginning of the song. Now it works with crossfade as well. Another interesting change here under the settings, if you go to location services and you go to system services, you will have a new button for micro location. Now, Apple didn't give any explanation what that is or what that means. It doesn't have any like description there, but it's still there's a new option which you can enable or disable from here, but we will have to wait and see what that is about and whether it's useful or not. Under the settings app, if you go under passwords, you will have at the top security recommendations, which now have a new icon. Under the messages settings, we have a new change here for check-in. Now it only says data and it only says full here. So if you tap there, you will of course have full and limited, but it only says full and it has changed the wording here to data. With iOS 17 beta 2, Apple has finally enabled the new name drop feature, which basically lets you just bring your iPhones close together and it will be able to actually share your contact card. So it's as easy as that, as you can see on this demonstration right there, you just bring two phones together and they will basically be able to share contacts. This has been enabled now with beta 2, it wasn't enabled on beta 1. 
And when you're trying to share something via airdrop, you will see this pop up right here. It says that if you don't see any people nearby, try holding the top of this phone near the other's phone. So if you're trying to airdrop something and it doesn't show up on the list here, you can just bring the phones close together to do the airdrop. There's another change here on the standby mode. The font now is much bigger on this model of the standby mode. So if you use this, the clock here will be way, way bigger. There's also a smaller change on the photos app. When you have a photo of a pet, you will see a new icon for lookup right there. Now, previously we talked about the shortcuts on the lock screen. You will be able to add shortcuts on the lock screen as of course lock screen shortcuts, but now they actually work. They were there with the first beta, but they didn't work. Now you can actually use them and run the shortcuts from your lock screen. And of course, even open the apps just like you saw right there iOS 17 beta 2 will also add new shortcuts. So we have new shortcuts for music. So smaller sizes for recommendations and also smaller size for tap top charts. So right there, you can see top 100 USA number one right there. And you will have a medium one as well. And you will have also smaller one for recommendations. There's also a new widget for the clock, this transparent looking widget, which actually is pretty cool. Now, one really nice feature that Apple has added to iOS 17 beta 2 is that when you're trying to message someone via Siri, you will be able to now change the app way, way you want to message them. So let's just try it out. Send a message to test M. So there before I try to actually send the message, I will have the option right there to go ahead and choose where I want to message them. So by default, it will be the messages app and you will have all the other options right there. Now, something really interesting that I got on beta two is this pop up right here. I'm not sure this is 100% new with iOS 17 beta two, but it says finish setting up Siri, even though my Siri is set up, but right there says tap to download data that will enable advanced features. So that actually sent me to the settings when I tapped on it and it was a download actually going on in the background. I don't know why that is, or I haven't seen this before, but it will show as a notification on your device. Now this right here is really interesting as well. When you take a screenshot or you're marking up something, if you go to add one of the shapes right here, so if I add a triangle, you will see that green dot right there. Now this is a triangle, but I can make it into a square and actually add more like angles right there. So you can see you simply rotate that and you can go ahead and switch between all these different shapes. This is really, really cool and a change on beta two. We have a few changes here on the clock app as well. First of all, when you go to your alarms, it will actually say now alarms, not just alarm. It will say the same here for timers. And we have some more changes here under timers as well. Now, first of all, the labor label here, the default one will be timer, not just label, which is a change from iOS 17 beta one. And also we have an edit button. Now tapping on the edit button, it will allow you to actually edit all the different timers that you have here on your device as easy as that you can go ahead and delete any of the timers. And when trying to start a timer, you will notice that the button right there is actually smaller and starting a timer is really interesting that now it will show the original time right there underneath the timer. So if I had this timer set up for 10 minutes, it shows 10 minutes right there. And if you want to delete active timers, you can just tap right there. And while it's still running from the edit button, you can easily delete any timer you want. There are new changes on Safari as well. First of all, when you go to your private tabs, if you don't have any tabs open, this won't be locked with Face ID. You know that with iOS 17, you have the ability to lock with Face ID your private tabs. Well, if there is nothing open, it won't actually lock them at all. And you will see new icons here for profiles. You know, we have profiles on iOS 17 for Safari. You will see now new icons right here, which basically it doesn't show that like hamburger icon, but it shows the icon of the current profile you're using. For more Safari changes, let's move on to the settings app. And we have a few changes here when it comes to profiles. Now it also shows the personal profile. Previously, it would just show the profiles you have created. Now, when you go here, you can see that you can edit it, edit this, but you cannot actually delete this profile. 
while if you go to the other profiles you have created you will see a few changes here as well so you can use a light and dark mode or you can use any of these colors they also have added these three dots which now will enable way more colors to be used with any profile that you create and just underneath the settings right here it will also show you the extensions that you're actually using with that profile moving on to the new contact posters that apple has added with ios 17 if you go to customize one of them you will see new buttons right here basically a redesigned ui which in my opinion looks much much better than the older one also, when you go to edit one of your contacts, you will see now that animation right there. So it basically switches between different options that you might have for that context. So the card, the photo, and all that will be animated right there at the top. There is also a change for recent calls on the phone app. When you go to recents, you will see that they are way more spaced out than they used to be before. On the shortcuts app with beta 2, when you go to automations, you can now create automations for your transactions this used to be here before but now you will see a totally different ui where you can choose from payment and transit identity and access as well you will have your cards here and all the categories another new feature is that you can choose the merchants if you just tap right there you can search for any merchants you want and choose and select them from that field Moving on into the notes app, if you go to notes and you have a note with a PDF saved on it, you will now see that little arrow right there. Now if you tap on it, it will show you all the different options. We will also see a new change here, it says view as and it says large. Right there it will show how you're viewing and of course you can go ahead and select the sizes from there. Now it will show the same if you tap on the three dots on a note, you can see attachment size and it shows what size is actually showing right now. Of course, tapping on it again, you can go ahead and choose the size. Another smaller change here on the podcast app. If you go to podcasts, you will see now a new icon for the library. Moving on into the health app, a very welcome change here. If you go to your medications and you go to options, if you have enabled follow-up reminders, now you will also see critical alerts. Now you will see here a list of all the different medications that you take. And you can go ahead and enable critical reminders for each of these of course you will have the list here if you have more two or three or even more you can choose for which you want to get critical reminders for which not and you will have also a new calendar view here when you go to state of mind like right there you will have a calendar view of course with all the data that you have added there so you can find that by going to mental well-being on the health app and right there on the state of mind you will have a new calendar look now this right here is really interesting when you have your iphone connect to the carplay of course the volume of the device the volume of the media output is controlled by the car not by your iphone and this right here is how the control center will show that it will always be all the way up and it will basically be grayed out right there which means that you cannot actually control the volume from here there will be also a new ui for the remote control on the control center this is the new looking ui which in my opinion looks way better than the older one and the gray effect that the search bar had here when you go to spotlight search has now been removed and it looks much much better this way combined with the keyboard and when talking about keyboards slide type has now support for arabic language so if you use that language you will now be able to also use slide to type now that we're done with the new features, let's take a look at the performance. Well, this is really surprising. iOS 17 has really good performance. When it comes here to Geekbench 6, it's actually, it's actually scoring quite good. Now, this is the score that I got on the second beta. So, the multi-core score has actually increased quite a lot. We have it at 6,875 while it was 6,805, so 70 points there increase, while we have basically the same score right there with a single core score. But in my opinion, it's looking really, really good on the performance size. As far as battery goes, we of course have to wait for a few more days to see how battery will perform on iOS 17 beta 2. So what you should you do? Should you update or not to iOS 17 beta 2? Well, if you already have beta 1 on your device, there's nothing to lose. Basically, you need to update to beta 2. It will most likely be way better, way more stable, and hopefully even have better battery life. If you don't have iOS 17 beta on your device and you're thinking about it, I would suggest you wait a few more days to see how this beta will actually work or maybe even wait for the next beta or the public beta release until you install it on your device, especially if the device you're trying to install it in is your main device and you use it as a daily driver. 
So what's next regarding iOS 17? Well, we got the second beta this week and I'm expecting Apple to release the third beta probably around maybe June 4th or 5th right there. Another two weeks until the next beta releases. That was Apple does and probably until the end of July, we will see this two week schedule before Apple moves on to the weekly schedule, of course, as we get closer to the public release of iOS 17. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I will see you on the next one.